We are back with Mr. Costa Diamantis, who is answering our questions, an FBI probe centered around him right now. Mr. Diamantis, welcome back again. Thank you. All right, let's go back to the Torty report for a second, because I pulled it up, and I just want to read what it said, okay? It said, based on available evidence, we do not find credible the largely consistent accounts of Mr. Colangelo, your daughter, and Mr. Diamantis concerning how Mr. Colangelo and Anastasia first met. Our conclusion that those individuals lack credibility concerning the straightforward question of how Mr. Colangelo and your daughter first met casts doubt on the integrity of the circumstances surrounding Anastasia's hiring in the division. Your reaction to that? My reaction to that is uh, the investigation uh, started as it was it, uh, supposed to be an impartial investigation um, and one that I thought was being uh, done with Stan Torty, of course, a former U.S. attorney himself. Uh, in fact, uh, Nora Dennehy was part of the interrogation process and the questions uh, being asked. Correct. Certainly one one could lead it to believe that we're looking for a predetermined outcome, uh, one that felt that there was a quid pro quo when it was determined that there wasn't, based on the fact that the secretary of OPM was very clear that all of the requests made by the uh, chief state's attorney were denied. They were denied, multiple, that is correct. Uh, on multiple occasions, and, uh, and once by myself in, in a letter to the agency. Uh, and... Uh, uh, so now refocusing on the memories of people to remember when they met the first time in, in uh, two years ago uh, and using that as the basis for credibility, uh, I think for me is, is telling. Okay. All right, let's move on to some of the serious accusations that are really at the core of this and get you your explanation on them. Talk to me about what happened in Tallinn with the school rebuilding there, the school impacted by crumbling foundations. Uh, we know that they also got served a subpoena, according to reports. So let's talk about that specifically and how it got emergency status. How did you all decide that that school should bypass the bidding process? Uh, the decision is, is not made. The final decision, of course, is not made by me or the school construction team. It is made by the commissioner uh, of DAS uh, and the authority. That's one of those non-delegable rights uh, that stays with the commissioner of DAS. Did you uh, request it though? Was it your idea? No, it was requested by the superintendent uh, of schools in Tallinn based on the condition and the evidence that the superintendent had and the facilities director had on a engineering report that was conducted, uh, for, paid for by them, them being the town of Tallinn, and the information being presented to us. That information, once it's presented to us, we then put it together uh, and send it to the commissioner based on information that we have perceived, that we have received. And of course, the architects in my office and I converse and whether or not we have an opinion as to whether or not it is of serious nature. When you have an engineer saying to us that they're not willing to support uh, uh, the, the, the ability to have those children stay in that building longer than this academic year because of the advancement of the pyrotite, the debilitating effect of the foundation, and they could not safely, uh, they could not credibly ensure the safety of the children the faculty and the administration, that all enters into a decision by the commissioner of DAS. Okay, so that here's, was the here's a question. That was the basis. That ahead. was the basis for it. It's interesting because I was looking back on some of our reports because we reported on this whole thing when it was happening. And um, this was in December of 2018. According to our report, engineers mm -hmm. said that the building was still safe for at least another five years and that the board was contemplating the future of the school. And then we have actually, I, I took from a, a previous story that one of our reporters did, Dr. Walter Willett, the Tallinn superintendent, um, also speaking on it. I wanna play that for, for you and for viewers. Bottom line, the children are safe, the building is safe to use, and we'll work this out in the next few years. Could you hear that? I wanna make sure you could hear it. I could not. Okay, so he said, bottom line, the children are safe, the building is safe to use, and we'll work it out over the next few years. Just mm -hmm. someone just looking at that, it doesn't sound like an emergency necessarily. Correct. 
And then there was another report and, and, and an, ad, an addendum to the report is what I'm guessing, because we have seen the report. We have it in our possession. Okay. Well, I don't have it longer, of course. But there is, you're saying there is documentation of this. <laughs> there is documentation and there's documentation with the engineers saying they cannot, based on the advancement of the, debili uh, de the debilitating of the foundation, that they can ensure that the building is safe. Remember something, the spirotite is a new thing that people were experimenting. As a matter of fact, when the building was being demolished, there were laboratories across the country wanting pieces of it to better study it, yep. to understand how it works. So what the engineer may have thought at one point that was hired by them, clearly changed his mind. Uh, I think his last name was uh, Zaba, I'm not sure, uh, Silva. Silva was, I believe, it was the was the uh, scientist, the engineer who did the report, who said, in fact, the building would not be safe, and the children needed to be removed and the faculty removed at the end of the year. But there is substantiation to that. Okay. It's in his report. It's part of the file, and that's what this what the uh, commissioner reacted to. Okay, so let's talk about the circumstances afterward, because this is where some eyebrows get raised, and people want to hear from you on it. We have sure. D'Amato Construction of Bristol, which is your hometown, who ends up getting the contract. No bidding process, of course, because of the emergency status granted, as you said, by DAS. Um, they are building the school. They have, according to their website, you know, no prior experience with school construction or with a project <laughs> of that magnitude. Uh, what made you think that they, they were a good fit, especially if it was emergency status? Uh, you're asking me the question of why they were chosen. The question of why they were chosen uh, is really one for uh, the building committee and Mr. Uh, and the superintendent of schools. Okay. They choose who the builders are. Okay, I do so not. You do not. So you didn't have anything to do with the choosing of D'Amato Construction. D'Amato Construction or JCJ Architecture um, or their construction administrator. Cat. As a matter of fact, it is my understanding from news accounts that their building committee in conjunction with the city council and with the board of education passed a resolution or a language that said that all three of the individual companies that were hired were done so properly uh, and with uh, the full authority of the, of the building committee, the board of ed and the city council. Of okay, course, I haven't so seen the language, but that's what I'm told. So the Tallinn superintendent then comes out with an accusation. I know he sent a statement to Kevin Rennie, who's a Hartford current columnist. Um, mm -hmm. That statement says representatives of the town and the board felt they had no real choice as to CAP, which is the organization that oversaw the management, and D'Amato because Mr. Diamantis routinely emphasized there would be detrimental effects to the project if Tallinn chose contractors or consultants other than CAP or D'Amato. So what's your reaction to that? Not true. So uh, he's lying. That's such a thing. Uh, I'm just saying that's not true. Um, and, and certainly, Mr. Willett was under a great deal of pressure um, with with the school, and there was grave concern that how the parents were going to react, and especially knowing that the, the children would have to be removed. Keep in mind that that was 50,000 square feet of mobile portable space needed to be created in a very short period of time. Uh, and the work needed to be to begin. Okay. And the emergency proportions of this project were huge. And as a matter of fact, very similar to the emergency orders that were done by the governor in the state of Connecticut when we were uh, 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 eliminating the procurement rules for the hiring uh, for, of companies, millions and millions of dollars for companies in testing, in vaccines, in a public... Uh, communi political communications organization, yeah, had the, uh, the emergency. SEMA, SEMA 4, yep. millions of dollars in it were spent. That and has come up and certainly been ran about. I don't want to cut you off, but we only have a couple minutes, so I want to make sure well, we I'm suggesting to you, I'm suggesting to you that the talent emergency was of a similar magnitude. The difference was okay. we were talking about 500 kids in the school uh, versus, you know, the thousands that we were talking about in, in our population, or millions, I should say. So the other time that eyebrows were a little bit raised here is with CAP, all right? The other, the other 
entity that was hired to do this. They ended up hiring your daughter. Did you have anything to do with that? No. You did not have anything to do with them hiring your daughter, even though they got the state contract. They got the state contract, she was hired, and then they got more state money as well. Absolutely not. She says that in the Tory report, that the uh, owner just called her out of the blue and offered her a job. What's your reaction to that? I believe my daughter. So why would they offer her a job out of the blue? No idea? Uh, that would be a question for Kat. Okay, let's go back to, it's not just Tallinn that says that you threatened them. There are other communities as well. For example, your hometown of Bristol, <laughs> Groton. So, you know, what's your response when you have several communities saying kind of the same thing? Um, well, first of all, I don't know that it's Tallinn. Uh, I think what you indicated to me Tallinn was... Superintendent. Tallinn Superintendent. In Bristol, I, I'm not aware of any threats to hire anybody. Uh, so this is news to me. So how is it, who did I threaten in Bristol to hire who? Well, they're saying that it was because of Michael Sanders, the late Michael Sanders in your office had talked with them. So uh, I, but Mike Sanders, God rest his soul, unfortunately, he was accustomed to the way in which construction services, the other side of the building that is under the control of Noel Petra, uh, conducts business with respect to hazmat contracts. It is not the way we function. He was out in the field, new in the field. He had gone to Bristol, he had gone to Groton, he had gone to New London, and, and in a very short period of time, all together, and unfortunately misinterpreted how we function in school construction, because our rules are different than the rules in construction services. Once it came to our attention, he was instructed on what the proper protocol was. We fixed the problems in those particular towns and made sure they were accurate. I sent out an email to my team indicating they are not to, to uh, utilize the hazmat contracts until, until a uh, policy is established and published, in which we did. And at that point, we're resuming it again. Interesting, interesting. All right, um, we have run out of time real quick. You haven't been contacted by the FBI yet. The last time we had talked, you had said you hadn't. Still the same case, right? Still the same case. Okay. Mr. Costa Diamantis, really appreciate you coming on and answering our questions, and you are welcome back on the program if you want to flush them out more. Thank you very much, and I appreciate the time for everyone to hear what really is going on with school construction. Sure. All right, we did reach out to the FBI who said they would not comment on the existence of an investigation. The U.S. Attorney's Office also not commenting. Governor Lamont's office has previously said they will fully cooperate with federal authorities. That does it for us on The Real Story right now. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 News app. Have a good morning.